Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. I am so honoured to have Bruce McCullough as a guest today. Bruce is the late Ian McCullough's brother and we'll be chatting about Ian's incredibly beautiful and captivating novel, Joe Pete, which was published by Latitude 46 in October of 2023. Poet and novelist Ian McCullough was born in BC and raised in Northern Ontario. He's a member of the Chapleau Cree First Nation in Fox Lake, and his writing was deeply influenced by family and his Indigenous heritage. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Bruce. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Um, what I would love to do, Bruce, is if we could get to know your brother a little bit. So I have some questions prepared for you, if that's all right. Absolutely. Great. Um, for our, our viewers, how would you describe your brother? Well, I'll, I probably have a bit of a bias here, but he was the consummate big brother. Uh, you know, he um, he was my philosophical leader, uh, my spiritual leader. Uh, you know, he told me what what books to read what movies to watch and uh probably you know was my first teacher in rhetoric so uh he was um very astute uh loved to read loved to write uh was very in touch with his heritage uh he was and just an all-around uh even guy yeah uh, and when did Ian start writing? Oh, well, you know, we grew up in the 60s. So uh, we started, uh, you know, in those days, uh, there was never, you know, there wasn't a thousand channels to watch. So we spent a lot of time drawing our own cartoons. So you read comic books and then you would make your own comic books. So we did a lot of uh, writing and, and drawing from the very beginning. I mean, as as early as I can remember, he was writing. You know, now of course, you know nothing you'd want to publish or anything, but but we, you know, yeah, it was it was uh, it was like playing a game, or um, you know, I guess the kids now play video games. Well, we did comic books, we and we wrote stories and poems. Wonderful! How wonderful! And um, what would you like people to know about your brother? Ah, oh, you know, he was honest and passionate. Um, yeah. he was able to see through a lot of the, the fog and rhetoric that, that shades our world and, and see the truth at its core. And I think he was also excellent at delivering that truth. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, I think back to a, a lot of the poems he wrote and, and, uh, uh many of them are, are, will move you to tears. So, you know, he had an, absolutely astounding command of the english language um i often you know he was my pope yeah um at the beginning of the book i mean there's a lovely dedication by your nieces and nephews and a beautiful beautiful um intimate introduction to your brother and you know listening to you speak and also reading those items like I just have to say he's someone I think I would love to know and that we would all love to know uh yeah uh, yeah I think so you know he was he was the kind of guy that that people drove around at a party you know he always had a good conversation going yeah um, yeah and you know unfortunately he died before the book was published before it was even mm -hmm. finished so a lot of that credit goes to his wife, Lori, who, you know, she put it together. She put it into book form and she worked with the publishers to to complete it and and put it together. You know, I think that was it, for him. It was, the you know, his opus prime and uh, he was never satisfied with it. Uh, you know, and these are things that I, I learned from from Lori that, you know, he'd been writing it for quite a while and he kept rewriting it and. Uh, in many ways, she faced the uh, the same challenges as uh, Tolkien's son, right? There were so many versions that, you know, now you have to sit down and decide, okay, that's going to be chapter one, right? 
Wow. And that must be incredible too, Bruce, like for all of your family, now that the book is out in the world, like people must be coming up to you and saying how much they love it and just giving you all kinds of feedback. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I, I told you, I, I don't have any copies of the book because I keep giving them away. Uh, <laughs> and I have presented them to all my friends and, and uh, associates. And yeah, everybody comes back and they're they're kind of amazed that uh, that a writer of that caliber was in their midst, you know. Yes, yeah, and and he is, I mean, an incredible um, writer. I, so I know. Sorry, I know we share. I shared the story with you before we were on, like, um, I hit that record button. But I think it's worth it for people to know too, like. I'm, I've got 20 pages left of, of Ian's book, uh, and I am just so mesmerized by his writing. It's so incredibly beautiful. And for me, it's very similar to how I felt when I read one of Ian's heroes, Richard Wagamese, Wagamese excuse me, um, Indian Horse. I was on the go train on my way back to Barrie. Uh, I was the last stop. And... I missed the go train terminated early and went back to Toronto. I missed the announcement to get off the train and didn't realize that anything had happened until I was back in Toronto. So I had done a round trip and um, just because it was such a fabulous and a wonderful book. And for me, Ian's book, Joe Pete, is of that same level. I would have missed my go train stop if I was reading Joe Pete on the go train. So it, it's beautiful. I can't recommend it enough. And on that note, Bruce, can you tell us what is Joe Pete about? So uh, uh, Joe Pete is uh, an, an allegory of um, our, our personal family history uh, and of our tribal family history. And I think um, of the struggles that every family faces. You know, ours might have been different from, from other people, but every family faces some kind of tribute as it goes along. And it's it's how we react to that, how whether we stay together, whether we support each other. So, uh, yes, it is a book about, uh, you know, residential schools and um, racism, but it's also a book that I think anyone could identify with. Yes, yes. Um, and... Like uh, and, uh, the characters are brilliant. All of the characters are brilliant. I mean, Sandy, Hank, Joe, Pete, Simon, um, Louisa. I could go on. But who is who is your favorite character? So, you know, those characters um, are obviously members of my family that I remember. Now they are again. They have been fictionalized, so there are are differences. Um, so I mean, obviously, I'm I'm going to be attached to Mabel McWatch. That was my grandmother, large influence in my life. But I think the best character in the book has to be Simon. Um, Simon is that friend who goes with you when no one else with. Um, he steps into harm's way against his better judgment, against the everyone's wishes, but he does it as a friend. And I think we've all had that friend. And, and at some point in our life, we've all been that friend. So I think I think Simon is the most universal, lovable character in the book. Oh, he is. I mean, my heart goes out to Simon. And um, again, in that intimate introduction, uh, Dennis Stokes said, and I thought this was really beautiful, too. He talks about Joe Pete as being like Scout Finch from... To kill a mockingbird, you know, like she's got that intelligence, that force, the compassion, the brave conviction, like all of the characters um, in the novel are just really brilliant. And I love because I did wonder when I was reading um, if they were based on family members. So thank you for sharing that. That's really interesting. Fiction, like loosely, I'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, when did Ian start writing um, Joe Pete? You'd mentioned that it was a long time ago. Yeah, and, and that, um, 
I think that's the strangest thing for me. So when Ian was working on a new book of poetry or he was working on a story idea, uh, I was often his soundboard and uh, he would be excited about it. And he'd talk about it. Um, I didn't find out about Joe Pete till after his death. So I don't know how, when he started, I don't know how long he worked on it. Obviously there was years of work there, but uh, it was something he kept very close to his breast. I I was um, surprised to learn about Joe Pete. Now, he had always spoken about our past and he talked about, you know, he was uh, the stories that mom had told him, that grandmom had told us, uh, but that he was putting it together like this was a hundred percent surprise to me. A wonderful that's, surprise. But a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> that is, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It, um, I know you'd mentioned, so it was a surprise, but did, did he share or did you find out from Louisa what what was the spark that was just like, I've got to write this book? Did he share that with anyone? Do you know? No, no. That yeah. you know what? And and uh I really wish I knew. I really yeah. there were so many things that happened in our life. You know, um both my grandmother and my grandfather uh, are residential survivors. And just like my grandfather never spoke about the war, my father never spoke about the war. Every once in a while, droplets of that past would drip out. And I can remember maybe two or three occasions that either my mother or my grandmother would, would say something, some little bit. And I'm sure that would intrigue you, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I would think that it was probably one of those little epiphanies that, that inspired him. Wonderful. Wow. Um now you your brother um he, he had many literary heroes he had richard wagamese um thomas king thomas highway um did he have the opportunity to meet any of these heroes or how did they influence him bruce and uh, well no no he never as far as i know he never met any of them but um he has always been involved you know i told you so he he wrote his own comic books and and in the 60s, you could buy the classics. So you could buy Hunchback of Notre Dame or, 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 or that kind of title as a comic book called Classic Comic Books. And uh, so he was in the 60s, he was reading the classic writers. And, and I think if you were to ask him, he would, you know, I mean, absolutely. He had favorites. He had champions. Um, but I don't think he would say there was a bad writer. He, he read everything. And, uh, I, I miss that. I miss that because he would say, oh, I've just read this book and you should read it. And it would be something that I would never think to pick up. And mm -hmm. it would be life changing. You know, he was just uh, and I think that's why he was such a good writer, because he just immersed himself in the craft. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, Bruce, you know, I'm so very sorry for your loss and your family's loss. Like it, he just sounds like he was the most in, incredible man and, and talented, just beyond talented. And um, I think everyone should read this book. I can't recommend Joe Pete enough. And Bruce, I am so appreciative of your time and honored that you would come and speak about your brother. Um, it's, I, I just find it really fascinated, fascinating and make witch, make witch, make witch. Um, for our viewers, what I'll do is in the description box down, down below, I'll put links to Latitude 46 Publishing's website so you can purchase a copy of Joe Pete and read it. Thank you, Ian. Thank uh, Ian. you. Bruce, thank you, Bruce, make witch. Thank you very much.